Hi, I'm Anna Waltrades, and today I'm going to show you how to make yogurt. It's a super simple and easy way to preserve our milk harvest a little bit longer, as well as make a bunch of delightful treats, including one of my very favorite nightly snacks, Gogurt, which let's be honest is probably already taken, but it's frozen goat milk yogurt and it's delicious and delightful. Let's get started. I get my hands dirty. They show me no mercy. So I just keep working. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Making yogurt is super simple. I like to use an instant pot to make it because it has a special yogurt button which helps take all the guesswork out of it. But you can also do this quite easily with a pot and a thermometer on the stove. So step one is we're going to heat the milk. We want to make sure we get all the fat that's risen to the top in the jars. All right, so I will pour into the instant pot. The best thing about this is that I'm actually using my own yogurt as a starter for this. This is a step that comes a little bit later, but first things first, we'll get all of that milk into the Instant Pot and get this started. Click the yogurt button and we're off to the races. All right, so the yogurt has been heated to 185 degrees and held at that temperature for an hour. It is now ready to be turned off and the lid opened so that it can cool off. And then we're gonna add our culture and heat it for eight hours. I really like using the Instapot to make yogurt because it saves me a whole lot of potential for errors. I have a very easily distractible life here on the farm. And so basically if I was cooking this on the stove, which you absolutely can do, I just need to be really careful about not scorching it. And what happens when you cook it in the Instant Pot is that it just saves it from getting scorched. So also your timelines become a little bit looser because you're not really worried about those kinds of things. When you first push the yogurt button, it brings it to 185 degrees, which you can also do in a pot with a thermometer. And then the next step is to take it out and you can either cool it with the lid on and it just takes a little bit longer to cool it, or you can take it out and put it in an ice bath. Again, you could just put your regular pot into the ice bath, but the most important thing is that you get it cooled down to room temperature so that you can add the starter culture. And for me, that starter culture is just a little bit of last time's yogurt. And if I were in less of a hurry, I would just let it cool with the lid on. But because I'm in a little bit of a hurry, I'm gonna take the whole thing out and put it in an ice bath in the sink. And now I'll just stir it and cool it down to room temperature. So once your yogurt is at room temperature, uh, whether you put it in an ice bath or you let it cool naturally in the Instant Pot, the next thing is to add your culture. I always use last time's yogurt as my starter for this time's yogurt batch, but if you just want to use store-bought yogurt, you totally can. You just want to make sure that it has no added flavor or added sugar and that it has live culture. So you can take a spoonful of either one, put it in here, then a splash of fresh milk. You stir it up. Wait till there's no little chunks in there anymore. Then you pour your little yogurt concoction into the main batch of yogurt. Stir it all up. We put it back in the Instant Pot. We push the next button and it will hold that at 80 degrees for eight hours. And then after that eight hours has passed, you will have hot yogurt. So then you just need to cool it and it's ready to eat. So eight hours later, you've got yogurt. Once you put it into the fridge, it will obviously uh, get a little bit thicker, but if you want it to get even thicker, like Greek yogurt, you can put it over cheesecloth and strain it. I don't really like the texture of Greek yogurt, so this to me is finished yogurt. Put it in the fridge and that will last up to a month. And one thing that's really nice about that is that when my goats are in peak milk production, they are producing a ton of milk and I need about 10,000 different ways to use it. And this is a great way to kind of put off that inevitability for a little while. I can also freeze it. The texture of it after you unfreeze it is not super great, but it does work really well for my frozen yogurt. So we've got now our yogurt and we can finish making my gogurt, my goat yogurt, frozen yogurt, TM. Growing peaches in Seattle is a bit of a feat in and of itself, but I am super pleased that this tree that I planted two, three years ago is now producing an insane amount of delicious peaches. And we're gonna take those inside and add them to a whole bunch of things, but they're also super amazing right off the tree. <laughs> so good. 
As I mentioned at the beginning, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, a awesome, easy to use platform where you can create a stunning website for yourself. I've been using Squarespace since I started my business in 2012. It is really easy for someone who's not very tech savvy like me to drag and drop and create a stunning website with all my needs. I have a commerce section so you can buy merchandise or products that I create and sell. I have a blog, I can host photos and videos, and it's just a great resource for me. Make sure you go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash and of all trades to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace provides beautiful designer templates that you can just drag and drop your material into, and Squarespace also offers incredible customer support 24 seven. One of my favorite ways to use up both yogurt and fruit from the garden is to make frozen yogurt. And so right now we've got ripe peaches and ripe raspberries. My friend Kate, taught me this recipe and it is absolutely wonderful. Check her out, The Modern Day Settler, on YouTube and Instagram. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking off the peelings of the peaches because they don't make for great texture in the frozen yogurt. And this is a great way to use any kind of bruised or somehow otherwise damaged or not super pretty fruit because it's all gonna get blended up and it doesn't really matter anyway. The most awesome thing about this is that you can use basically any fruit. You can also use jams or jellies, anything that adds a little bit of taste complexity to your yogurt. You can also use regular yogurt. You don't have to use homemade yogurt or even homemade goat yogurt. And I'll just grab a handful of raspberries to top it off. And then you just need a little splash of vodka. This is not gonna make it alcoholic. In fact, this is probably all gonna evaporate off by the time it's all done, but it really helps to break down the flavors in the fruit and then of course something to sweeten it. If you're using really sweet fruit already, like an overly ripe peach, then you really don't need to add much sugar at all. But because we've got fresh honey from the bees outside, we're gonna just put it in and make an extra special little treat here. Couple tablespoons, whoops, oh my goodness. Well, this is gonna be extra special apparently. And then this is the only item that isn't from our farm. I wish we could grow lemons here, but alas, we can't. And we're just gonna take a half a lemon, squeeze it in there, make sure not to get any seeds. We'll blend it up, leave it for an hour, and then it's ready to mix in with your yogurt in the ice cream maker. All right, so we're gonna tuck that out of the way for an hour. We'll come back and make some frozen yogurt. And whenever we're doing any kind of cooking, the chickens really get spoiled because they get to have almost all of our table scraps. I'll even put the pits in, not because they can eat them, but because they'll get decomposed in our compost pile. The one thing we don't want to give them is citrus peels. So we'll just put this aside. Chickens will get a nice treat later. I will also tell you that if you don't like raspberry seeds or other seeds in your frozen yogurt, it's a texture thing for a lot of people. You can actually strain this in a strainer or a muslin or whatever else first, but I love the taste of raspberry seeds, so I always keep them in. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. We're gonna put this in. Then we're going to add the yogurt. over the dull roar of my ice cream maker. Now we'll pour the rest of this into a jar and save it for tomorrow. Okay, I got a little overzealous with my pour here, so we're coming a little over the top, but we are in fact done. At this point, if you want it to be a little bit more solid than that, you can actually put it into the freezer, which we're gonna have a little extra anyway to do that. Breakfast tomorrow will be delicious and delightful. My presentation is always the best part of everything. So we'll pop this in the freezer for later. We'll eat this right now. It is so hot in this kitchen so that it's extra melty right now, but delicious and delightful. This is pretty much the best discovery of my whole summer. If you haven't already, go check out Kate, the modern day settler on all forms of the internet and get yourself an ice cream maker and make some of this right away. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and for supporting my channel in that way. If you'd like to support me in other ways, there's a link for my Patreon below. There's also a link where you can find merchandise like t-shirts. I hope you leave this video feeling challenged, inspired and excited to get outside and do things with your own hands as well. Cheers.